What's happening everyone? Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be part two of Project Knock Knock where we hopefully diagnose and repair the knock on this 2011 Scirocco 2 litre TSI. Uh, as I said in the last video, this is uh, our friend Chris's car and this is sort of we're doing it as a bit of a favour. Plus we'll make a video, you know, this might be cool. Who knows, we might learn a thing or two. Obviously me and Spen Diddley in the garage today. Uh, on the last one, obviously we we'll pulled the engine out of the car, gearbox split the lot. This one, we're actually going to dig into the engine and try and really ascertain as to why there is knocking in the first place. So uh, we'll be taking the bottom end apart, uh, possibly taking the crank out. We'll see what it's like because I'm pretty sure that it's going to be big end bearings here. Um, but, you know, who knows what the thrusts are like? Who knows what the main bearings are like? Who knows what the oil pump's like? It might be something with that as well. So in this one, we'll break the engine down. Uh, and we'll see what's wrong. So what did you say this is part two? This is part two. Right. So part one is complete. Part one is complete. So part one complete. Part one complete. Oh, okay, okay. Right. I says Timmy at VW was our handy with the sealant. <laughs> he, he liked the sealant gun did Timmy at VW. Right. He even liked his shares. So well, it's literally pouring out every single part of the engine. So the rocker, the sump, both of the sumps uh, on the timing end. It's literally spilling out. So, I mean, if it is coming out this way, then it's probably going out on the inside as well, uh, which just means that if it breaks down, it finds its way into the oil, pick up the lot. So let's get these off and have a look. That's the, the oil smell, poo poo, like that. Oh, that was a good idea, wasn't it? Spin yes. Would you get me a rag, old chap? It's clear. There's nothing obvious in there, like, we'll pull that off and have a look. There's something in the back corner. Like. There's tons of sealant, yeah, though. Check that out. All over it. And there's bits, like, it looks like it's broke off. I mean, look at that, like, big chunks of it in there. Some of it is all missing around there. So. so this is the oil pickup, and I think I can see some chunks of bearing. As Spencer's head comes into the camera, <laughs> he's blocking me shot. Check that out. That is silicon. Oh, and look at that. Look, Jackie. Loads of silicon. Yeah. And then that has to be bearing material, that. Ew. Has to be. Look, it's like really thin, shiny. You can see there the oil pickup is absolutely chocked full of it. Check that out. Aha, look at that. Silicon, bearing material. So it looks like we're on the right track here. The uh, pickup is full of bearing material, swarf, bits of silicon. So it looks like at some point, possibly there's been a, a bit of a block up on this pickup and it's just affected the bearing straight away. Probably big ends, maybe thrusts as well. Possibly mains. We'll see. We're gonna to have to pull the part now. And now we've seen that much debris in there. Uh, we'll get the rest of this pulled apart, and we'll, we'll see what we've got. That was me holding the car while you got that out. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah. to do with. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it, shakes your teeth out. Oh. Splendid. I don't, don't remember the days of. Normally aspirated drivers. Oh, yeah. Well, the Five only hours. tuning tool he needed was a timing light. <laughs> I don't even know where my timing light is now. You threw it away. No? Yeah. I positively recall right, yeah. you throwing it away. I'm only going to play with 20 valves now. <laughs> Death by silicon. Basically, what it is, isn't it? <laughs> like engine death by something. Uh -huh. oh. 
Engine death by, you know, stop soft by something. Whoa! <laughs> what the? Ooh. That looks complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. Scared. You're scared? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because it's like... It's obviously the tension. It's a step above up from like AT&T Campbell, isn't it? <laughs> well, look at that yet again. Just tons and tons of silicon. And there's the bits that you can see, but then the bits that you can't see They've probably found their way in somewhere. Drop down. It's just a pollen. Short, long top. There'll be some cleaning to do. Oh, I'm sorry. Where did that come from? Ah, that, that goes in here. In the shape. You are good at that as a, as a kid, I see. What's that? Making the shapes fit, the holes. Alright. Oh, Jackie! Okay. Check that oil, gotta be blocked oh. right up. Breaking. What's that? Bloody hell. I Timmy look, Silicon I'll again! Look, look at this. Oh, check that out. My good God. Where was that starving? That is a full big blob of silicon that was stuck in that little gallery there. Completely blocking it. Wow. See when I find Timmy? It's gonna get it's stuck in him. Uh, Timmy from VW. Aye. What a little knob he was. I can quite imagine that this is gonna be one of them ones actually where you when you really do start to dig into it, you end up thinking, how the hell did this thing run? How did it even survive? I mean oil galleries are blocked, silicon's everywhere. Pickup is full of bearing material and splodges of silicon all over. How much silicon are we going to find in here? Now oh, there's loads on the end of that, still an look. Aha! Literally, every... Oh, oh there's the burn. Shaggy. There's the bearing material. So that little oil gallery there looks like it's something to do with the, the pressure release. Oh! That's why it, it, it has a secondary pressure mm. while well, that's something, isn't it? So that'll have just been blocked and it's not getting its high oil pressure. It's staying on low oil pressure, possibly. All right, so quite possibly a problem with that being blocked, something to do with the, the pressure release and then, uh, then subsequent oh, Timmy. oil pressure. I don't <coughs> think that's supposed to do that. Oh well, there's number one, big end fucked. <laughs> I didn't think it's supposed to do that, like. <laughs> oh. oh. That is got more play than my big toe. That's number one, big end. Yeah. And there's obviously there's a bit of. You expect a bit of side to side, it's not the end of the world, but it's the fact that there's that much movement on that big end. You can hear the oil squashing. That is shocking. So, without a doubt, the big end on that, number one, is knackered. I think two, three, and four, they've got some side to side, but not huge. You know, like clearance. That number one there, though. That is appalling. That would certainly knock the tits off. Shaking the camera. <laughs> right, Spencer's had to shoot off now, so it's just me to pull the rest of this crank out. I've unhooked the timing chain off the end, so I'll literally just have to undo. Uh, the big ends we'll pull the caps off we'll have a look at the bearings uh, and then we'll do the same for the mains and we'll pull the crank out it just it seems pointless not doing it going this far and plus we might all do this uh, and then the mains have got a healthy bit of wear on them as well so i think it'd be a good idea to to really look at that as well but uh yeah let's get these these big ends cracked off Right, so the caps and the big ends are stripped out now, so got them on the bench, let's have a look at them. Keeping it all in order so I know exactly what is what. 
Uh, I've marked all the rod caps just so I know the number and the orientation. Uh, the really cool is actually, uh, if you see that, it's actually the casting that's broke off which gives it the locating aspect. So these can only go on one way and that's because they've been cracked off like that. I think that's really cool that. Uh, having a look at number two, three and four, they don't actually look too bad. The caps looking good, Nick, just visually, obviously. We'll have, we'll have a measure. The bearings have definitely got signs of wear on them, but not not huge, to be honest. It's not excessive. However, <laughs> number one has got terrible signs of wear there. That has worn off quite a bit. So this is the bearing out of the rod. And that's quite worn. And the one out of the cap was even worse. Plus, if you can see that little nick. That's terrible, that. And the worst part about these bearings is on the back, there's actually signs of wear. Signs that there's actually been a bit of a spin. So that looks like a spun bearing there. Now, it's not an appalling spin where it's overheated but it looks like the tolerance has been that bad that that bearing span there and sadly it looks like it's knocked out the number one rod cap now I haven't measured that yet but there's a good chance of that rod's toast so straight away it looks like excessive wear and a spun bearing on number one which is a real shame because a spun bearing can cause all sorts of other problems, uh, more noticeably for the crank. Another indication that number one is the main culprit is also that the actual axial side of the rod is all nice and smooth and it's got the nice little bits of machine marks on them and they look really good. However, number one is scratched all the way around. So not only does it look like we've got a bearing problem here, but we might actually have a rod problem. Now I'll measure all this to, to confirm, but if that rod is out on its axial clearance or on its you know ability to provide bearing crush, well then that rod's dead, which means that not only is this a bottom end sort of rebuild, then I'm also gonna have to pull the head off the engine just to get the piston and the rod out of the other side. And if I've got to do that, then I might as well look at the possibility of putting fresh rings in. So. It's like, Christ, this could be like a full-on engine rebuild, this. Um, but we'll have a look at the crank when it comes out. We'll, we'll see how bad that is. Right. Here we go. And I think last thing to do on this video will be, I'm going to pull this head off and uh, pull this head off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all that look at all of that sealant and that's on the inside of the engine as well that is friggin disgusting that absolutely bloody appalling Right, I think we'll get this head off. Very last thing, head bolts, uh, which is luckily the same size as an 18T, so we'll bash on with them, no problem at all. Outwards going in, let's get this head off. For God's sake, man, one of the strip lights on top of the bench has just failed, so I've literally, I'm in diminished lighting now. But I think we'll end this video with a bit of an overview as to what's wrong with this engine and, you know, what we're going to have to do to fix it, so let's go for it. The block looks pretty good. All of the bores look nice and round. I will measure this, obviously, though, uh, but straight away, visually, they look good. They obviously are a little bit glazed, but we'll get over that in a future video. Now, because this straight away wasn't just a bearing failure it looks like it's more of a contamination problem you know like the silicon getting into the oil way then i'm gonna have to strip the block down to an absolute 
bare block and after we've prepared the cylinders we'll then go full whack and we'll have to clean it get the oil galleries cleaned out you name it because there might still be some sealant left in there and we just simply can't have that uh, going forward so the block straight away we're gonna have to take it right back down to a bare block so it's a complete complete rebuild this one the crank also looks visually in quite good condition now again I will have to measure it to find out exactly what state this is in but the number one straight away where the bearing would actually span a little bit that feels really good it looks really good it doesn't look any different to the rest and the axial wall there on the number one for all it looks a tiny bit scuffed you can't feel that at all so again we'll measure that just to see what it's like but it, it looks in pretty good nick that's a nice good solid forged crank number one rod straight away i'm going to stick by what i said before and i think i'm going to write that rod off there's no way that's going to go back in an engine that play there is just a little bit too much for me um, and I'll, I'll measure this just to see how bad it is but that is uh, toast that also ties in with the rod cap which you can actually see the wear you see them bits at the bottom there that's the bit that's actually fine so it looks like when that rod has had loads of movement there's been some axial play and it's worn that top part there so straight away again number one rod trashed it's only the number one bearings that look bad and that's more so on the back so it looks like they've definitely spun the insides yeah there's a, there's a bit of wear but they don't look too bad the rest of them look absolutely perfect no problems at all but obviously i'll change all them main bearings and caps all look good no real signs of horrible problems there thrust washers have got some signs of wear there but they're not too bad they'll get replaced also the rest of the pistons and rods all look good as well uh, they actually look really really clean and that's because when this engine was rebuilt less than 10,000 miles ago i'm led to believe uh, there was fresh pistons in there so fresh pistons fresh rings and let's face it it would have been great if the sealant wasn't a problem but sadly it was a problem so obviously the oil pickup that's trash that's gonna have to go the distance all the hardware all that looks good cams all look good there's no scores no signs of horrible oil problems there so there's some damage on this engine but I think there's no doubt about it we'll be able to save it there's you know it's not terminal there's there's some bits that need to be replaced but obviously over the course of this video the job has just got much bigger hasn't it I mean it started out as it could possibly be a bearing breaking down so we just replace the bearings chuck it back together and send it it's a bit bigger now so because of that damage on the number one rod that rod has to be replaced which means I have to take the piston out and I'm not really a fan of putting worn piston rings back into a cylinder I just think as soon as you disturb them you're causing problems so you might as well for the cost of a set of rings you know you might as well just chuck a new set of rings in there uh, so I think without a doubt we're gonna have to deglaze the boards we're gonna have to put fresh rings in we're gonna have to replace that number one rod or ideally replace all of them all new bearings you know clean the living bejesus out of it it's gonna have to be absolutely immaculate that includes all the oil galleries so this block is gonna have to go right down to a bare block oh it's just gonna, it's just much bigger it's a full full engine rebuild so i hope that you're looking forward to it just as much as i am doing it <laughs> i actually really like doing this type of stuff so i hope you like watching it as well thanks very much for watching this video uh, we'll carry on with this project on the next one uh, where i think i'm gonna have to go around and measure everything so yeah we've done the visual on this one we know what's worn what's not visually by feel next time We'll get the mics out uh, and we'll get some new uh, measuring kit that I've got. So I'll be able to use that as well. So thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Oh, and Nelly forgot, make sure you subscribe. Let's face it, you're not going to want to miss this, are you?